That's like, that reminds me when I was a little girl. <laughs> hey, I got some good weird looks from that one, all right? It worked great. We are crashing. We, we are crashing. Okay, so he's making his video, so I'm going to make my video. Alright, welcome y'all back to part 3 of the RB25 400 horsepower build. Uh, 283. 283? I said take number 83. <laughs> yeah, take number 83. I basically have already filmed all this, but there was no real direction to it, so I'm re-recording it. Damn it, Nate, don't get me off on a tangent or else it's going to be the same shit all over again. <laughs> Anyways, so what we're doing today is uh, getting water lines to my idle air control valve. Um, I kind of have a few things set up here already. I just wanted to make some 90s coming off of these two ports. So this is the, um, no, this is the inlet. So as you can see, it's a little bit bigger of the line. I'm pretty sure I used the wrong line. No, 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 that's right, sorry. So it's just a 90 with, I believe this is quarter inch line. I should have measured, aha. <laughs> If I would have measured this to begin with, we would be in a lot better position right now. So this is quarter inch line coming out of here and then into a 90, which this tube here is like a three eighths inch line. So it's a little loose, but it's more for mock-up. So I know what I'm doing. And we got a quarter inch adapter to a half inch adapter. So this way we can route this line into this port here. So this is where the coolant is going to come out. This used to go to my oil filter heat exchanger, but since we're not using the heat exchanger anymore and we are using this very beautiful SSS Motorsports uh, oil filter relocation kit, which we're that's what we're running the, or we're running this to our Wow, it's gone. It's somewhere. To our Gretti oil filter relocation kit, which has a thermostat in it, which will also run to our oil cooler. So all that will adjust for itself. So we're coming out of here. We are going into the idle air control valve, and then we're going coming out, and we're gonna go into here, which this is another 3 8 or half inch. I think this is a 3 8 line. Uh, and then back into this port here, which goes behind the thermostat. And this will be able to flow nonstop. This will give me better flow than I had with the old system because this was kinked. Holy, I forgot, I need to show you guys this. So before my, uh, I don't have a heater. So I just bypassed my heater core. And when I did that, I just put this line in thinking it was no big deal. Well, I think it was becoming a big deal because the hose was starting to split. So I don't know if that tells you anything, but it tells me that it's probably overheating. Trash. So now we are running this back over to here. So I did just pull the plug, or didn't just, I did it a couple days ago, but I pulled a plug on a TIG welder. Um, I have TIG welded in the past, but I haven't for about eight years. And I spent my fabrication money for my intercooler piping and my downpipe. Uh, which is going to be stainless and aluminum, which you have to do, or you don't have to do the stainless with the TIG or with the TIG welder. You can do that with a MIG welder, but all aluminum work has to be done with an AC TIG welder, and I don't have one, and I very seldomly weld aluminum. But I'm going to give it a shot. If I fail, I'm out money, but we'll have a welder. If I make it, awesome. I made all the intercooler piping, and then the only thing that I've had help with in my car would be the roll cage, which, thanks Chase, you rock. Because you did fantastic work. And you, you can practice on my, uh, my, or my intake to get it. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, so, to save Nate some money as well, I'm going to do his intercooler piping as well, his downpipe as well. Uh, I got a bunch of tubings. I'll probably do a lot of my exhaust, extend my exhaust out into stainless, just to make it flow nicer, less rusty. All right, so I got you guys set up here. Um, I got a couple of lines. We had a the old line that I explained to you guys where I was running my turbo drain from. This thing was like routed up and around and through and up and down, and I don't remember exactly what this came from, 
but it worked out. I cut it up and now we had all this extra tubing and we are going to use this to route our lines. So we're going to put this one here. This is going to route essentially up and over and in. Um, I'll explain to you guys in a minute how it's set up, but my idle air control valve is on the bottom of my intake. And we're going to be running into this line first. I feel like I'm fucking trying to work like a star. You know, trying to show off the So you're sitting off to the side. Pretending like, yeah, no, this is going fine. I can do this. We're good. I'm not uncomfortable at all. Alright, so both of these are ran. Um, I need to find a quick clamp for this one. <laughs> People don't watch us for the knowledge. <laughs> and you know, it kind of sucks because we have so much to give, but they don't want it. <laughs> Stop trying to teach me. Don't learn me shit. I want to be entertained. <laughs> Alright, so we got our intake on. And we put a little light down here so you guys can see what's going on. I'll see if I can adjust it better for you. But, so we got this line here that's going to slide into this half inch adapter. And uh, on this side, this is the line coming off of the thermostat. Let's see, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so, I'm trying to get rid of that clicky sound from touching the GoPro. But we got the thermostat housing. This goes, this is behind the thermostat comes out and then it's going to connect into wherever that fitting is. Uh, it's kind of up and behind, there it is. So we're gonna attach that into this and then this into that. I'll get that taken care of real quick and we should be good to go. I do need to figure out how to route this line because this is my air line coming in which will basically bypass my throttle body and effectively control my idle speed but i need to run this like directly down and i don't know if i can do that but i'm gonna give it a shot No, keep keep doing what you're doing. Don't mind me over here. The We're just building a real car, you know, with an RB. Yeah. Not none of that two shape bullshit. You're gonna lose track of what you're doing. Keep working. You're gonna forget what you're doing. Right. You're talking about windowing a block over there. Go balance your turbo. Yeah. <laughs> I got three quarter length injectors instead of full length injectors. So I need to cut this line down, which is just all aluminum. I just need to shorten it by however many centimeter or millimeters this needs to go in. And then that will be done. And it's really just knocking dumb stuff off the list that needs to be knocked off. All right, so Nate's about to head out. Uh, I'm all finished up for the night. We noticed some things that we gotta address. So one of the big ones being my... Ugh manifold right here hits on my engine mount which i don't know if you guys can see it but it's causing a gap in the bottom of my seal so that's not all the way tightened down but you can kind of see how at the bottom there's a little bit of a gap compared to the top yeah that's that's not gonna be good um so i got i'm gonna make some plates on this uh, at least on this side to get around that. It's just gonna be some tubing with, ah, so a plate welded up here and then tubing coming off and then tubing connected to this. I'll make a jig so all these holes line up and then I'll just make the new one set up so it. Take your hammer and knock that pipe back. Oh, I was thinking about just taking a hole saw and just hole sawing out where the pipe goes. <laughs> Screw structural integrity. Um, another thing, well, I guess, well, let's touch on down here real quick. So, 
I routed a pipe coming, it kind of loops. So, uh, you can kind of see there. So it loops, this is one of the factory pipes from this unit that would normally go on top of the motor, but it'll loop around and then it'll come back and then we'll make something that ties this into the intercooler piping before the throttle body. So this way this can open up and allow air in. Uh, all the other stuff is ran for it. Just need to run coolant line from back to front. And then this will all be done on this side and I can throw gaskets in here and mock it up or mount it up permanently. Right now there's no gaskets anywhere in this these pieces. So, but seeing this, this is all good. Now I can work on the oil filter relocation kit. And the one thing I was concerned about with the intake was this or this fuel rail setup is meant for full length fuel injectors. Well, the difference between a full length and a three quarter length, which is used for say a 350Z, uh, 370Z VQ motors, is about a half an inch. So there's these studs right down here that mount to here and you mount on the back side here. Well, this is a tube and I cut about a half an inch out of this tube and this tube over here flattened it out real nice and now this thing is sturdy as all hell and these are pressed in so they're not moving around and doing all sorts of weird stuff uh one last thing that i wanted to talk to you guys about that i jacked up and i want you to take a learning lesson from this so you don't do the same dumb stuff that i do chill i took this all apart to measure it and to verify that it was ball bearing turbo not saying I don't trust twisted motion but I've just heard bad things about ordering parts and not getting the parts that you ordered not from them in particularly but just eBay stores and whatnot so I ordered this turbo and I had my doubts so I took it all the way down uh, pulled the impeller uh, off and then pulled the shaft out to verify that it was ball bearing turbo in here. Uh, it is in fact ball bearing turbo, but this whole shaft now needs to be rebalanced. You might be able to see that there's a little nick right there where it was sanded down and that's literally just a balancing mark. And we had one other guy local here that he did, he did the same thing. He was skeptical about what he got. So he tore it all down, put it all back together and the turbo blew up within four minutes because it was unbalanced. We don't want that to happen. So we're not gonna let that happen. I'm taking it to TurboTech and having it balanced. And I want to see about having my rear housing ceramic coated so we don't have to worry about any heat dissipation or anything like that. I want to have my manifold ceramic coated as well. So we'll see how much all that costs and have that done. Um, Nate did stuff, but you'll have to wait for his video to see all that stuff. So don't forget to like, subscribe, let us know what you like. If we're improving our videos, let us know. If there's something that you don't like about our videos, let us know. We, we can work on it. We can fix it. I'm actively trying to improve the channel. Um, I'm actually doing post editing now, color, uh, stabilization. I want to start working on Touching the GoPro, uh, I'm going to look into a foam handle and whatnot. But that's just what's going on on our front. So Nate's going home. Deuces. Talk to you later, buddy. Yep, it's 2.15 and you have to be back at work at what, 8? That's only 1.45. Oh. But yeah, I got to be on the road about 7.30, 7.45-ish. <laughs> and then I have to take children to the park tomorrow. So... We got, we got what we gotta got, we got what we gotta got. So, as always guys, stay, stay sideways. sideways.